then went over to the medical and the fire. We have uh, Mr. Topper over here, and we have, is it Topper? I said it right. And Ms. Cozy run one of the best programs in this county. Every time I turn around, kids are getting scholarships, and I'm sure if you went over and found out some graduate on a Thursday, and they'll start work on the Monday. But anyway, I am Command Sergeant Major, retired, doctor as well, Mrs. as well, Commandant as well, down. I am the principal of this school, and I want to welcome each and every one of you here tonight. You know what, I'm trying to figure out why everybody went to the back. Now, you, you tell your kids don't get in the back, everybody went to the back of the room. So I'm gonna keep walking back and forth, back and forth. I hope you guys had a great tour of the academy, and you got to see some things. We're gonna give you guys some, um, you know, a time to ask a few questions about it. But you'll have more time later on when uh, we, oh, we do another one, I think, with uh, all the kids during the CBT for those that want to come to the cadet basic training. Um, so as of right now, you have already accepted through the portal. For those that did registration, uh, you should have registered today, and you're good. If you hadn't done that, we gotta get that done before Friday. Just accept it through the portal and register. Re register. Um, she's going to talk about reminders. She'll give you this back. You'll get back. I want to introduce to you the best counselor in the state of Florida. Okay, the best counselor in the world because I got a grandson of him all the way in Texas. I make sure that she counsels him. She is his counselor. He's 11th grade, born and 12, and that kid is rocking because of her. So I'm going to let you guys on to meet Miss Brister, and she, she'll put some information out to you as well. Thank you. for Remind, and I can't stress how important that is because that's how you're going to be connected to us. Um, and it even translates, so if, you, if English is not your primary language and you send a message in Spanish, we can translate it and back and forth, so it, it works great. But that is how our whole school uh, stays in the know. You're going to get uniform uh, schedules each, each week, and that's how you, they're going to know what to wear, and your student is responsible for knowing that. So they have to have their own account. But for right now and for over the summer, what you're going to get They've already, it's already been sent out, so it's on there, is the list of electives that you have to choose from. So you're gonna pick your foreign language, you're gonna pick the classes that you want, and they're gonna, and the student has on their account the electronic submission form. So the student does this. Now we teach independence, so we know that you're still there, we're not ignoring the parent, and so we want them to talk to you about the stuff, but the student is actually responsible for submitting their electives. So we do train them so that when they leave here, they can be responsible young men and women. But Remind is really important, and we're gonna send out all the uniform information, how to order and what to order. Um, our cadet basic training, as you mentioned, we're gonna give you the dates for that and how to sign up. So everything from here on is gonna come to you on Remind. All right, so it won't come through email. You can't rely on Facebook because we just do that for promotion and bragging about our students. But all the information you're going to need to know is going to come out to you on Remind. Okay? So make sure you get your directions. And if you're not signed up, get signed up. Make sure your student is signed up because we need them right now. The most important thing they can do right now is to pick their electives. All right? So we need to get that in because we need to go ahead and figure out how many teachers we need for this and how many for that. So it's important that we get those electives picked. But thank you. We did talk to you about our, our uniforms. We are a military academy. Everybody has to look the same. It's called uniformity. Has anybody here ever served in the military before? Anybody? I have Well, thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. I had somebody in it. Uh, Sergeant Bloom, thank you for your service. He's currently served. And you know, you guys know, it's all about uniformity. We can't have 50 different pair of khakis coming out here, different types of shirts. So we order our things from Rizzy Brothers. They're located in Lakeland. And you also have a website. She will send that information to you on the Remind. That's why, again, it's important that we use Remind so you will know how to order the stuff and what we suggest that you order. Your children will get a military uniform uh, free of charge from us. They get everything. We give them everything, everything except for the underwear. We give them socks, t-shirts. I'm, I'm serious. We give them everything but the, but the underwear. And they will get that uniform. That's free of charge. They'll turn it back into us at the end of the year. But they wear that uniform on Mondays. 
But on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, if you can turn around, you see these young people in the khakis. See, that young man got the wrong ones on, so he'll get in trouble with you when he sees me. Standing right up here with the wrong khakis on. But it, they, they should have the same type of khakis on because they come from the rise. We all look alike. Um, and that same poem. And then Thursdays and Fridays, we do physical training. That's outside. They do Army PT or, you know, they play games. They do different types of team, team building exercises and those type of things on Thursdays and Fridays. Of course, Thursday or Friday because they don't come both days. We got a block schedule, so they come to us every other day. So we are in uniforms at all times. You know, they earn certain things like civilian days and all that other thing, but that's, they'll figure that out um, once they get here. Um, and what she said, I do want to reiterate to her, we're growing adults. We're growing productive citizens here. Um, one of the things we do, and I learned too, the hard way, y'all had kids grow up. Once they graduate from high school, they, they pretty much, people don't talk to us anymore. The college don't want to talk to me unless I got a FERPA and they want to change that every 90 days so I can't keep up with the FERPA. So you know what? You don't get to talk. They don't talk to us because when they're grown, they got to be able to advocate for themselves. That's what we teach them. They are no longer your babies when they enter this academy. They're my babies at that point. I don't, I, I really want parents to give us, give them that room so we can help them. I want you involved. I want you telling us stuff, but I want you to back off and let them do some things on their own because we're preparing young adults to be productive citizens. They can't be productive citizens if you do everything for them. And I, I'm not saying that you are, but I do have parents here that, that will do everything for the child, but we don't want that because we want them to be successful in life. So those type of things. But I talk to parents all the time. You don't have to worry about it. You know, we'll work things out. But we want to make sure that they're, they're doing their electives and so forth. We're trying to get that done. Um, the CBT, I, I, I'm sorry, I walked out without the dates. I know it's the last week of July. It's called Cadet Basic Training. And it just familiarizes the kids with some of the, the, the uh, things we do here at the academy. You know, just getting them acclimatized to, you know, how we do formations, how we march, how, what we do in classes some of the rules that we have, and plus they have the opportunity to meet the older cadets. One good thing about this place, is very inclusive. It's a family. It's a small school, it's very safe. We got great people that work here, but it's a family. These kids know to treat everybody the same, regardless, because everybody has a strength. We all have weaknesses and we have strengths, but we all feed upon all of that to make this a, a great um, academy. So we um, wanna make sure that your kids understand that. I do want to introduce a couple of people. I did introduce um, it, uh, Mr. Topper. Do you call him Mr. Topper or Off Chief or what? What do you call him? Instructor Topper. What is it? Instructor Topper. Okay, we got it right. Instructor Topper. And of course, my twin sister, Miss Cozy Hubbard. She is awesome. And I want to introduce the senior arm instructor. Could you raise your hand? Okay, Special Forces guy. We Woo! love him to death. Give him a hand. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Yeah. Two months, and he's already made a great impact on this, this academy. So I feel like we got a great team. Gerald TC is the backbone of this school. We have all the courses that any other school is, but Gerald TC, every student, unlike any other high school, has to take Gerald TC. They fail Gerald TC, they lose their seat here. So it is a requirement here. You have some very good instructors. Every one of them has spent, just like myself, 20 years plus in the United States Army because there's other things that we want to teach them outside of their academics. And plus, that's the class most of the times you're going to find a lot of their strengths, where they're strong in. Everybody's not an A student. Everybody's not a famous football player or soccer player. But you know what? Some people are very good at working with others, empathizing with people, good with nature, working all the time. We're going to figure that out. And those kids, that's why that uniform they wear. You'll see them, they don't have any one on with medals and everything else on them because we recognize everything they do. They get a ribbon for everything they do. They can be, that's the thing. It's about, you know, rewarding them for the great things they do. So this is the place to be. Um, we're just so glad that you chose us, you selected us. We have a great family organization here, very strong organization. Um, they raised over $30,000 this year for us, and we did a wonderful dining out the other night where they, the kids, the sophomore dining out, where the sophomores will go, uh, they sit with the superintendent, the school board members, uh, everybody is a very big time. People come and sit and eat, 
And it, we went from eight course to five, because you know, inflation kicked our butt. But they had a five course meal, they had hors d'oeuvres, they learned etiquette. We teach them that, all the things that we make us want We have a, ball, a, a military ball once a year, we just had that a few weeks ago. They learn a lot about the military tradition, the ball, and they get a dinner for that as well, and they dance and have fun. And they watch them dance too. So we have a good time. So we do other things outside of school and try to you know, get them involved in a whole lot of things. You all saw the electives that they have. ROTC has about three or four electives that we want to take, but we have other electives outside of that. At Bartow High School, we share students and we share teachers. We are Bartow, now if you look at it, say Bartow High School. Sunderland is, a, is, is a, a branch of that as well as the International Baccalaureate. We all kind of work together and we share students. So there are some courses that our kids can take over there. You just saw, as I said, the fire, the medical, um, it's the cricket class, what is that? Digital design, they can take over there. Criminal justice, we just opened that back up for our kids. We have cyber security over here. It started this year, we have three more units next year. Um, what else we can take well, over there? We have foreign language. Foreign language. Oh, I didn't see my foreign language. My Russian foreign language instructor. Please uh, welcome um, Major Nikia. <laughs> And you all met most of our cadets. Let's give them a hand. They come on. And that's all the things they do. They have to learn 150 community service hours to get the summer diploma. I didn't bring that in here, but we have what we call the summer diploma that go above and beyond because they go above and beyond what they have to do for regular high school. They have to earn 150 community service hours. They have to do a capstone. They start the ninth grade with that capstone. And they'll run them at the end. They have to do a product, they have to do a presentation. What else, seniors? What's the presentation? What else you got to do? Like Portfolio the paper. and the paper. So they'll, but we'll train them to do that. They have to make sure it's good order and discipline. They stay in the uniform, good leadership. Um, and I can't remember all the other things there, but they do that. It's above and beyond. So they get this beautiful diploma, and that we're having a ceremony next week at Branson. It is the most beautiful ceremony you've ever seen. And they get a beautiful medallion to go with it as well. We believe in tradition, we believe in legacy. Every one of them has to sign their book. We have the book that started when Summer Academy started back in 2006. Six. For every cadet, every year, the graduating cadet signed that book. I had a captain come visit me last year from the Air Force. He said, I graduated in 2009. I said, I have your, I, I said, you know what? There's a book with your name in it. He said, what? I said, you signed the book. And he, when he saw it, he almost cried. He could not believe that we still had his name there because every year those kids sign that book. It's a tradition, it's a legacy. And we believe in that. If you ever read about someone anyway, someone is an old, old school way back through Civil War time. So I want you to look at there's a lot of history that goes with that. So I'm gonna stop talking because I can talk all night long. My husband is so glad we had this tonight because he didn't have to talk to me tonight. He, he's, he's like, I gotta talk about time she get on while he's sleeping. So I'm gonna shut up and I'll let you guys ask any questions that you may have. Wait a minute, she Um, if anybody in here primarily speaks Spanish, we do have um, a group that we call Siempre Conectados, and that means always connected because we do have a lot of people here whose families primarily speak Spanish, and we want everybody to feel included. So raise your hand, my little. You want to say something in Spanish real quick to let them know? Oh, if you're in Spanish and you have questions, we're here to help you to answer them. That's our senior, Abby DeHaye Susan. Her capstone project is actually initiating that group, and it's going to be something that goes on each year. So they're going to help us with any event where we have families. And she's recruited others, and we have some really good leaders that are in that group, so that we always can tell you everything in both languages. So if you have questions when this is over with, and you need it to be in Spanish, we have them here to help you with that. Okay? All right. Anybody have any questions? My question is, uh, when it comes to signing up for the electives on the Remind app, should we talk to the school? We want, that's why we did what we did tonight. We want you to also look at the, um, the uh, web page. The elective is something that you, your kid, might enjoy taking. Okay, 
she would not. But as far as the court, no, it's not because the electives, you have to have eight electives, and most of them are gonna have at least two. It depends on what other classes they have to take. But as far as putting you in the right class, we look at test scores, we look at grades, and, we, and, and she will make a determination of what classes. Some of your kids may go straight into an honors class because they tested you know, high or something. But as far as the electives is concerned, we want you guys to look at the web page. We saw some of the electives out here and let them make a, a decision on how, what they want to take. Because we want them to be in a class that they're happy with. Are students allowed to take electives uh, through Bartow High School if they're not at Summerlin? I, the ones that I named off, medical yeah. and fire. Okay. Drink this class again. Digital design. Digital design. I don't know why I keep on from here. Digital design. They can do band. They can do all of the, the, the all of the band stuff like band, orchestra, chorus. What about the, specifically the art classes? We're letting them do art. Okay. They can do art. Okay. Okay. And the criminal justice academy too. Thank you. And the academy's over. Okay. We don't get in all the academies like culinary and the culinary school. I can't get my kids in there. And the construction is hard to get. And she was just talking to me about it today that they just got so many kids in there. And then plus, we're trying to keep our kids um, to take some of our electives here as well. I would suggest you get one of each. Um, I would suggest you get two polos um, and two sets of PT uniforms, two t shirts and two shorts. Those you get priest. And if you have any problems purchasing those, please let us know. We, we're here to help. We, we want to make sure that that's not a reason for your child not to come here. But I can tell you, it is cheaper than buying those clothes all over in the school year. I'm trying that babies don't offer dual enrollment here? Dual enrollment, just, just that I asked for it, don't mean you're going to get it. We have to look at a lot of things to put you in that class and talk to those teachers too to make sure that you can handle it. Because what you don't want to do is take a dual enrollment class and fail because that goes into your college transcript and that can stop you from getting a scholarship. So we want to make sure that you're able to do it. And we've had, but yes ma'am? And most dual enrollment classes, just word of warning, most dual enrollment classes where you're going to be enrolled in high school and at college, you have to have a 3.0 GPA. Yeah. And six credits. So and if they're coming credits. in as a ninth grader, um, they don't go into dual enrollment. So they get plenty of information about how to do dual enrollment. Uh, while they're in ninth grade, so that 10th grade, if they want dual enrollment, they know how to do it. And by the time they're in 10th grade, we'll probably have enough back on our campus, but we just not didn't work out for this year. But yeah, we won't do the ninth graders right off the bat. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. I just want to say one thing about dual enrollment. She she means for ninth and 10th graders. So our upperclassmen sometimes can take it off campus at Holt State but typically they're not driving to their 16, so that's why she's not mentioning that to you, but it's just like any other school that has dual enrollment. So yes, a lot of our students take dual enrollment classes. She's saying that there's not one gonna be on this campus, but when they're upper, the upperclassmen can go to Polk State and take those classes. Okay. Any other questions? No? Well, I just wanna thank each and every one of you for coming this evening. If you have any more questions, you can always email or call us at the number at the academy. We'd be glad to answer it. We're looking forward to each of you guys being a part of the Summerlin family and kids being a part of the Summerlin family. And, you know, hey, thank you again for coming tonight. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks.